Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome back to Lamps Cryptoverse. So today we're just going to do um, a screen of what I'm going to show you. I'm not going to show you my moving lips, but maybe I'll show you <laughs> J-PAL's moving lips. So today, as you may know, uh, the Fed governor, chairman, I should say, uh, spoke over at Congress and this is going to be a two-day meeting in which he speaks about his opinions and answers questions. And uh, this is the Wall Street Journal headline here. Jerome Powell says Fed is prepared to speed up interest rate rises. And that's kind of surprising because it seemed uh, during the last few times he spoke that he was going to slow down the rate of uh, rate increases, not only that, but stop raising rates and then hold them. And now it seems like the opposite. It's like something's gone wrong, like inflation is out of control, or maybe the economy. So um, these are his lips. Unemployment, consumer spending, manufacturing production, and inflation have partly reversed the softening trends that we'd seen in the data just a month ago. Some of this reversal likely reflects the unseasonably warm weather in January in much of the country. Still, the breadth of the reversal, along with revisions to the previous quarter, suggests that inflationary pressures are running higher than expected at the time of our previous FOMC meeting. From a broader perspective, inflation has moderated somewhat since the middle of last year, but remains well above the FOMC's longer run objective of 2%. Well, let's stop this. Well, if you look at the beginning, when he started talking about bl the weather, he started blaming it on the weather. The lady behind him started laughing. I thought that was funny. So what was it? What, yes, he, he. I'm joking, but he is partially right. There, there's some uh, seasonal adjustment factors that are affecting the data, and then there's some unseasonally warm weather that's affecting the data. And... Uh, then he said here, and this is highlighted, the latest economic data have become stronger than expected. That is true. So there's been a big change in the economy over the last few weeks. And given that the Fed's been raising rates for about a year, you would think the, the surprise would be a, a large downside surprise. And instead, we're seeing the opposite. And he's saying, and I highlighted up here in the first sentence, that maybe he's going to have to speed up to a larger half point rate increase. That's unbelievable. And then I'm trying to go down here and show you. Here it is right here. Employers added 517,000 jobs in January. And that shocked economists. I forgot what it was. It was significantly higher, like double or triple what they were looking for. So time, times are pretty tough for j -Po. And as a result, uh, the stock market went down at least, it depends what index you're looking at, but on average, I would say at least 1% and an average about 1.3%. And I believe the S&P actually was down one3 But the Russell 2000 was down less, but it was down tremendously yesterday, about 2, two, two 2.5%, which is really, really insane. So let's see how the crypto market effect got affected. Well, you can see here, the one day um, movement is basically a sea of red. So that's the heat map, a sea of red. And you can see that Bitcoin is down 1.9% and it's down all the way to 22,000 already. And you can see some other ones got hit worse, like OKB and Solana. And that's daily. If you go look at weekly, it's really a, a true sea of red. Even Bitcoin's down 7%. 22,000 and some other ones like Solana are down sharply and ADA, which is Cardano, DOT, which is Polkadot. They're all down sharply. Even some of the recent favorites like Polygon slash Matic are down sharply. And you can't see it here because it's a smaller coin, but um, Aptos, which had gone up 400%, is down tremendously from its high. It's APT. I don't see it right here. It's probably right under my nose, but it's down tremendously. Uh, yeah, I don't see it. Oh, here it is, down 
Actually, maybe I shouldn't say tremendously. Down, oh, this is weekly, down 14.6%, but it's probably down even more during the last month. Here, down 30% in the last month. So the, we're talking about some big, big losses here. And if you look at the CNN Fear Greed Index, finally, it's moved from greed, or even extreme greed. It was barely on, on the extreme greed territory. It's moved down to neutral. And why? Because people are getting scared. And as you know, this is a contrarian indicator. So uh, if you remember, I was bearish up here. And you could see why, because it uh, it's, uh, was at an extreme greed level. And I take that to be bearish from a, from a contrarian point of view. You don't want to do what everyone's doing, right? You want to do against, you want to go against what everyone's doing, going against the grain. Now, I want to show you something really interesting. Most people look at the CME group probability. This, this is called actually CME FedWatch tool. And a lot of people use it. And you, you can see here the next FRMC meeting, basically the FO, uh, Federal Open Market Committee meeting is in about two weeks. And most people look at this for the probability. They don't look at the historical probability. So I figured, let me, let's do something different. And what I want to show you is that this probability, and this is a 50 basis point probability, was only 9% only a month ago. Then it went up to 24, 31, and 31% was March 6th, which is a day or two ago. And now... It's um, over 73%. So it shows you that one simple statement from the Federal Reserve can really affect uh, the market. And it could affect probabilities, forward rates, futures. It's just incredible how powerful the Federal Reserve, Reserve is able to jawbone the market. And because of that, there was a very, very sharp, uh, not very sharp, but there was an increase in short-term interest rates, but not long-term, which is very interesting. So here you're looking at the two-year, they give it a fancy title here, market yield on U.S. Treasury securities at a two-year constant maturity. Basically what they're trying to do is uh, look at the two years constantly because obviously I'm going back to 2007, 2006, and the two-year maturity uh, didn't would not have existed back then, so this tries to keep it apples to apples. And you can see we've gone from nearly zero as recently as June twenty-one to uh, nearly five percent. So that's incredible. By the way, this is uh, March sixth, so I think we are at five percent right now. This this one here. Is a little delayed. So what we're going to do now, one a minute, is go to my uh, Excel spreadsheet, and you can see what the two-year rate actually was, because I think it actually is five percent. Now, what I want to show you is what's called true inflation, and this is showing that inflation is still coming down. And this is because mostly because of housing and uh, consumer products, and you can see right, you can see the core, you can see the categories. So food and non-alcoholic are down uh, up 2.7 percent year to date. Um, housing, see, housing has gone down a lot. You can see over the last year, it was grown at a 15 percent inflationary rate, and now it's grown at a 7 percent rate. And transports went down dramatically. This went down the most, and I'm not going to go on and on. Because this is, we really hit the big ones like transport that it really went down a lot. So the point is, inflation is still coming down. At least if you look at data, data points that J. Poe does not look at. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go to my Excel spreadsheet and I want to show you the individual rates in the yield spread. So here, what you're looking at in the top table, maybe I should make it larger. is from top to bottom, a 30-year bond, 10-year note, seven years, five, three, two, one, six months, three months, and one month. And together, if you chart this, which I did, it creates the yield curve. And I want to focus on the two-year note because I mentioned it was using the Fed's FRED data 
it was like 4.89%, something like that. But I think we might have hit five. Oh, here we go. We went over 5% when the Fed spoke. There, it, there, there you have it, 5.0, 5.019. Now, the big deal about what happened today is not actually these rates. It's the yield spread. And most people look at the 10 uh, year minus the two year. I look at all three, the 10 minus the two, the 30 minus the two, and the 10 year minus the three month. And if you go on the right, I put a little formula here. This finds you the minimum number. Basically, the, uh, it finds the biggest um, spread, yield spread. And it's in negative numbers because it's going backwards, basically from, 10 to, from two to 10. And you could see today we hit the largest uh, yield spread basically for the 210. And we also hit the largest yield spread for the 230 by far, eh, but not for the for the three month, 10 year. But what's very significant to me is the 230, the two year rate versus the 30 year bond rate. That's, that's a big difference from the previous high. And let's see if I can find the previous high. It might have been 84 basis points. Yeah, the previous high was here. It was about a month, not even a month ago, it was 84 basis points. And you can see it was close to the 210. But now the two, the two versus the 30 year is much higher. The spread is much higher than this yield spread, meaning yield difference. So that's telling you something. So here's what it's telling me. If you look at the... The one month, the three month, the six month, the one year, and the two year, especially the two year because they use it as a benchmark. This this rate here, I'm going to highlight it for you. This rate really shows you where where the Fed, what the Fed's doing, where the rates are going for the Fed, including what's what the J Powell, J Powell calls the terminal rate, and he thinks uh, people like me think it's going to be about five point five percent. And you could see that it's reflecting, you know, the increase in interest rates, even though it's two years from now. And I think that has to do uh, with the, the, the lag effect from when the Fed raises rates to when the economy actually slows down. It takes, a, I would say, at least a year. Let's just call it a year. So if it takes a year, you know that it's, this rate's not going to uh, be reflected by growth, meaning slow in growth. But if you look at the 30 year, this rate has been slow uh, going down. It was, I'm trying to find a peak. It was around here, 4%, no, 4.158% in November. And now it's actually gone down to less than 3.9% because this rate, not only does it reflect liquidity and inflation, but if it reflects economic growth, long-term secular economic growth. The same thing with the 10-year. So this is saying, whoa, maybe there's a recession coming. Right now, everyone's looking for a soft landing, but I think it's possible, uh, highly possible, actually, especially given today's uh, yield curve, that we could get a, a, a recession or maybe, maybe even a hard landing if the Fed keeps raising rates by 50 basis points. So I want to show you this chart here. It's similar to the above, but it's graphical. And the two top lines are showing the short term, the short term, um, let me make this smaller, the short term rates, as I mentioned before. So the top ones are the one year bill and the two year note, and you can see they reached new cycle highs here, 5.276, 5.019. But if you look at the two lower lines, the blue line and the beige line, they've actually come down from November. That's when the, the, C, the PPI and CPI report were really good. They went down and then they went up, but they did not pass their previous high. And this is why we're getting a large spread. And I, again, I think they did not pass in the previous highs because uh, yeah, investors are foreseeing a recession coming up or, or slowing in economic growth. And another way to show the yield curve is this chart here that I made. And you just got to know how to read it. On the left side, you get the 30-year bond. 
And then the years uh, get more current as you go to the right. So we go down to six month, three month, and then one month. And the orange curve here, which is denoted by these lower rates here that are highlighted just now, this curve is from a few months ago. Actually, I can actually look it up and give you an exact date. Let's see. It is, it is July 14th of 2022. So between July of 2022 and now during the uh, Fed's press conference, you could see the one month bill went up dramatically. The three month rate went up dramatically. The six month rate and the one year rate and the two year note rate went up dramatically too. But if you go out to outside to the latter years, like the 10 year and the 30 year bond, you could see that those rates are going up at a lower rate. And if you remember, I actually did a, a video on this. Maybe I should open it and show you. But if you if you click down, you look down at my videos. If you click on um, this one here, yield curve elasticity, you could see the not just a presentation, but you could see me speaking, explaining it. But basically, I I I I'm reiterating what I said earlier. What I do is I explain how these rates move, and I explain what elasticity is applied to treasury rates. And what else? And I showed you the, the curves here. This is what we have now, the inverted yield curve. But just realize that in this curve, you've got the longer maturities on the right side. On well, that Excel spreadsheet I showed you earlier has the longer years on the left side. On uh, what else? And the reason I, I'm talking about this and I gave this presentation is this. Uh, not this. Actually, these, these are the... The theory is describing the yield curve. It's this. It's that you can use the yield curve elasticity and the yield curve for strategic asset allocation of your portfolio. You could change your asset allocation and how much cash you have based on what this elasticity and yield curve are uh, telling you. And if you want to see more and, and understand more about this, just check out my video. And that's it for today. So I want to thank you all for listening to Lamb's Cryptoverse. And please don't forget to like us and subscribe to us because that's the only way we can continue to do these videos. And I hope to see you soon. If you have any comments or you'd like me to work on something specifically, uh, please send me an email, put it in the notes. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.